<laughs> Love it. <laughs> All right, everybody. How are you? Great. Great. Yeah. All right, beautiful. Who wants to give me some good news from the weekend? I got a listing. All right, yes. Heather. I'm glad to see you. Tell us the story, please. So I've been like super crazy with Ignite and then trying to do phone calls. So I was trying on Friday to do a phone call with like right before Ignite. And I just called and expired. And then he just kept talking and talking about his house. So I just kept letting him. And then I said, that sounds like really good. We should meet. And he's like, okay, yeah, can you come now? And I'm like, not this very second. Now you got to give me a, a minute. But then I ended up... Um, meeting him at three at his house. And I really didn't, like, I didn't have time between like Ignite and then like my kids getting them shuffled around real quick to do like a presentation. So I just kind of printed out a report and went there and I was with him for a long time because I basically just listened to him talk and tell me all about his property and his life and why he didn't like the other agents that he had worked with. And um, mm. so uh, we left with, we left Friday with me saying that I was going to come back with like, you know, uh, what I thought his, the price range for his house. And we would talk more and the contract, cause he didn't have a computer or laptop. So I had no way to like, give him anything through DocuSign. And then Saturday was a little bit rougher, but he ended up, he did end up signing. And um, I had to kind of talk him down from the price that he wanted. Cause he kind of was going crazy with what he wanted to charge for the house. But Hopefully it'll go okay. Beautiful. Congratulations. So did you take the price lower than it most recently expired at? No, I wanted to. And actually I talked with um, Kathy. Actually, Kathy helped me, Kathy Ray, because I'm actually learning today and Ignite how to do a listing contract. I mean, I kind of know, okay. but I've never actually done one. So Kathy helped me. And then she said that we should really do it at um, 425. And he was all of a sudden insistent on 441, which was more than Where's it. That number come from? But I guess that's just what he thought he wanted. Um, and so he I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What was that? I'm going to so go back to our. Uh, who? I don't think they're talking to okay, us. Keep, yeah, keep, keep going. I'm not sure who that was. Um, he, he kind of got really insistent. He wanted to do it for 441. And then he wanted me to put in a special stipulation that um, I could advertise the house and I could sell the house. But if he found a seller that he didn't want to have to pay me for the commission, but he still wanted me to like come and advertise it and everything. And so I, I basically just told him that's a completely different contract. And if you don't want to sign with me, I'll still you know, try to help you the best I can, but you've had this on the market on and off with agents and yourself for two years and you haven't sold it. But if you want to try that again, I'm more than happy to let you do that, but I'm not going to sign. I'm not going to work with you at that price. And I'm not going to work with you unless we can work off the commission. So we ended up coming to 5% commission um, with none of his weird stipulation things and um, 434.9. So. All right. Well, that, I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. I, I think uh, ultimately you, there was probably 20 different times in that story that you were, you, you maybe could have had the thought, um, you know, am I the right agent for this? I'm brand new. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I'm not ready with my presentation. I'm sure uh, there was a number of uh, uh, limiting beliefs that came into your mind. And I just want to recognize the fact that you, presumably squashed them all and went out there and got a deal. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Good for you. All right. All right. Isn't that cool, guys? You make one phone call, you end up with a listing. I don't think Julian's on this morning, but he took a FISBO um, uh, a little over a week ago, I believe. And uh, this is a FISBO that he's been courting for like two months. Um, and we were talking late last night uh, through the details of a counter offer. So he should be going under contract this morning. Um, so guys, this stuff works. We got to get ourselves in the way of buyers and sellers, right? We know that buyers and sellers generally interview one agent only. 70% of buyers and sellers 
only interview one agent. If you're in the way of that buyer getting a, you know, agreeing to a, um, an agency agreement or the seller listing their home, you have a seven out of 10 shot at getting that piece of business. All right. Anyone else want to share anything? All right. Great job, Heather. Okay. Um, shift tactic five. Who read shift tactic five that they would like to share? Any ahas? I read it. It was, um, it was sort of a repeat of what we did sort of toward the beginning of COVID. So it was just a refresher on um, capturing leads. And the important part is after you capture the lead, you have to learn how to convert the lead. Yes. And, uh, that's something I still struggle with, especially with the uh, cold, cold leads that are not, you know, referrals from a friend or family member is how to capture them. But I um, keep looking for the right script to, to do that with. And I think that's what it is. You just need the right script for it. So w can you walk me through an, an exact example of when you feel like you're lacking the exact script? Like what, what situation have you found? Um, okay, yourself? yeah. So like I had these, I was doing these Google ads for a while at the beginning of COVID. And I had this one woman call me from, um, she lived in uh, Cobb County. And uh, I, I can't remember whether it was um, Marietta or Kennesaw. But anyway, she found some homes that she was interested in. It was a new builder. So I kind of did all the background work for her. And our initial call was really good. Um, she, I did everything she asked me to do. The initial call was really good. She wanted me to find out about the builder because he didn't really have a sign up. He just kind of had these lot numbers out there and not how to reach him. And, and the agent's name wasn't on there. So she kind of Googled for an agent and my name came up. So we had about an hour long conversation. And then I found the information for her. And after, you know, and I followed up with her for like a week or so. And then nothing came of it, but I don't think I had the right script to get her to work with me as a buyer. Like I still have her in my contacts and I'll still send her information, but. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, you froze there for a second or was it me? It was, I think it was you, I don't know. Okay, I didn't hear that. Could you repeat that last like 20 seconds or so? I'm sorry. No, no worries. So I, I followed up with her but still converting her into an appointment, like a literal appointment to, to make her a buyer, I haven't been able to do that yet. Okay, so uh, I think, thank you for sharing that. I think it's all gonna be around, it's all gonna be around curiosity and motivation, right? So as quickly as possible, we have to figure out why did this woman click on the link, right? Is, what is she curious about? Um, what does she need help with? What is her motivation or does she have any motivation? And can you be the person <clears throat> to uh, help her get rid of this problem, this, this new issue she has or this new problem she has? Well, so she told me what her motivation was. She was in a house, she has like two or three kids and she wanted a bigger house. And she, the builder just didn't, he didn't advertise properly like what he was actually building. So I actually found the agent found out what was being built. I got her the designs. So I knew what she was looking for. She's just afraid of, she still is afraid of, if I sell my house that I'm in and he's gonna take more than nine months to build what I need, what am I gonna do in that between time? I don't wanna live in a rental or, she's like, you know, what am I gonna do? So I kind of thought about that knock program, but I don't even know if that fits into this situation. Well, the truth is it may, but it almost sounds like we don't have to make a decision for a long time, right? She just needs to go to the, uh, to the on-site place with you and go pick out her home. And then as it's getting closer and closer, knowing that she's going to sell, right? And as we get closer and closer to, <clears throat> um, uh, to, the, to the time that the home is built or going to be finished, you know, meanwhile, we're monitoring all the prices and you know, other new communities that might pop up or what the sales are locally and that kind of thing. And when the time comes to put her, her home on the market. 
because right now a builder could say all he wants, oh, eight months, nine months, whatever. But the truth of the matter is, is I would say we've got a kind of a bit of a crazy world out there right now. And um, while, while they may have some experience, they're not going to be able to guarantee anything. So she doesn't need to make a decision today on uh, who she's going to list her home with or when that di when that's going to happen or what the price might be. Your job is to keep her informed and uh, help her be strategic along the way. So you may discover in seven months that the NOC program is, is a good match for her. But right now, I don't think she needs that. So say, you know, hey, gosh, it sounds like you have a lot of questions. It sounds like we should meet. Here's my Zoom link. Let's look at each other while we're having this conversation, right? Or let's meet out at the at the community, and that way we can look at all the amenities together, and we can look at the different uh, lots that are available and different floor plans that are available, and you can make sure that you know everything about everything this guy's trying to build. It's almost like as soon as they meet with you, there's a whole new energy around the experience, right? Now they feel a little bit more. Um, and I don't want to say indebted, but loyal to you to some degree, right? You're, you're in a new relationship. And therefore, if you continue to answer their questions and deliver what needs to be delivered to them to make them happy, they feel more and more um, committed to you. That's why we want to get in front of them as soon as we possibly can. So you basically, once you identify their, their, their motivation, or for example, if they're asking a lot of questions, which require more than like, let's say a 10 second answer. It says, gosh, that's, a, that's some great questions that you have. It sounds like we should meet and we'll have an opportunity to go through all of that stuff together. And, and quite honestly, what that's doing, it's doing two things. Number one, it's moving the process forward. And secondly, it's doing it at a time that meets your schedule because otherwise what you thought might be a two minute conversation could turn into an hour long conversation that you don't have any control over. So it doesn't feel like an it doesn't feel like an appointment, if that makes sense. Follow all that? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else have any ahas from the shift book they want to talk about? How about on page 93? I have found that the agent who is the most consistent and persistent and their follow-up captures the lead and gets the business. Right? There's a quote in the middle of the page. If I found exactly what you're looking for, how would I contact you? That's pretty straightforward, right? It's not your job to give out as much free information as people want or do as much free work as they expect and then leave it to them to tell you when, if they want to be contacted. Right? I think, I mean, I've literally talked to hundreds, if not thousands of agents that will say something like, oh, my, my client is, uh, you know, doing some research and talking to the lender and we're going to get back together in a couple weeks. Um, I just don't know if you deserve to have that much confidence in all of your people. Right. I'm not sure that you've earned the right where it, they're thinking to themselves, oh, that Kim, I'm, she's awesome. I'm going to call her the second I'm ready. Right. They're like, oh, well, I'm just looking at homes. They don't know anything about anything. Right. A lot of times if you haven't had that consultation or that presentation, therefore, they walk into a new home community and they say, oh, well, they said I could get a better price if I didn't have a real estate agent. So I just went under contract. Sorry. Right. And then the one person that you were betting everything on is now getting, somebody else is getting paid. Make sense? Um, I really like the six connection questions at the bottom of page 95. Who are they? What do they want or need to do? Where do they want or need to do it? Why do they want or need to do it? When do they want or need to do it? And how do they plan to do it? Okay. By the way, for those that are in bold, bold has been awesome this last week. I'm almost completely caught up. What are people what are people hearing from their bold experience?
Are you guys saving up all your energy for, for bold 50 or what? I've been very bad. I'm way behind on mine. And it is the best, and, and it's a shame too, because it's the best bold, but you know, sitting around feeling sorry for myself, what can I say? All right, well, the, the, the first step is being on the call, and the second step is having an awareness around that. And then we gotta say to ourselves, okay, is today the day we're gonna do something about that, right? Or is today the day that we're going to, um, you know, push a little harder? Is today the day we're gonna go deliver value to somebody who's not expecting it, right? Uh, I, made, I made a plan around my week, and my week was starting at 8 a.m. this morning with my script partner, and he has blown me off multiple times and oh when you know we could do it this afternoon and so this morning, all right i don't know who your script partner is and i hope he's not in this call but he, he's fired he's not yeah, I Hardy. i'll be your script partner who's this kim oh, i need a partner <laughs> okay, i do too well, we can oh, all wait, wait, wait. hang on yep. let's all get let's all make sure everyone heard each other who was who the first person that said something it was me. Rose? Oh, Kim, okay. Oh, yeah. All right, Kim and Jan, y'all connect after the call. Who else needs a script partner? Me. I do, I need a script partner All right. as well. Tawantis needs a script partner and I think Ashley needs one too, right? Yeah. All right, y'all connect after the call. Okay. Who else? All right, I got, here's my take on script partners and accountability partners. You guys might not like this, it's a little blunt. Okay, I got a short lease for disappointing people. Okay, there's a big commitment that you're making when you agree to be somebody's script partner or their accountability partner. And Jan, if they don't, if they, what, what, what that person is saying, and I, I don't actually know who you're talking about, and it's probably a good thing. Um, what that person is essentially saying is if I feel awesome, and nothing else of any level of interest pops up in my day. I'll think about if all my technology works and my kids are perfectly behaving, I'll do script practice with you. And how often do you think that happens? Not very often. Uh, never. So that's right? why I scheduled and mine as a result, at 8, 8.30. So that I could be sure to get it in but, because it's the beginning of my day. Well, that, there's two parts to it. One is um, what time so that it works and nothing else gets in the way, but you also need a committed partner. And you need somebody that like, if they're, you know, puking in bed, calls you at the right time and says, hey, um, uh, I'll be the seller today, right? I mean, I, I know that sounds a little messed up, but guys, this is your business. We, we have to be able to do what we say we're going to do. No, it's that's true. Who we, that's this, who we should be. This will be the fourth script partner that I have tried to have a relationship with. And, you know, the first two or three days yep. are fine. And then after that, I'm like, okay, are they calling? You know, today's their day to call. Okay. You know, because I try to go back and forth with them. They're like, oh, gosh, I forgot. I had something else. I'm so sorry you know, the next day goes and the next day yeah, goes yeah. and there's always some excuse. And finally it's like, you know, I don't right. need to discuss. So what they're saying is they don't, they don't care enough about your, they don't care enough about their business to be a good accountability partner. They definitely don't care exactly. enough about your business. I, I want you guys to fire your script partners like regularly if they disappoint you. Okay. Done. Short leash. Okay. If you don't show up for the script practice, um, don't tell me I had an appointment. No, 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 no. You already had an appointment. The appointment was at eight o'clock. Okay, when somebody else wants your time at eight o'clock, you say, I have a commitment at eight o'clock. How about this time? Okay, that drives me insane. Okay, appointments need to be kept. Don't blow off one person because you think another person's gonna be be better or something like that. You committed to a certain time. Does that make sense? And guys, with that said, when your clients want you at a time that isn't particularly convenient or he doesn't give you enough time to prepare or something like that, then don't don't leave dinner in the middle of dinner to go visit with the seller. Say, 
I, I'm, I have a commitment at that time. How about this time? Does that make sense? This is about a life by design, y'all. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What are you hearing? Do you think I'm crazy? Okay. No, and All right, you cool. Know, I, I had this conversation recently, Bill, about you know a, a seller that I fired. I worked really hard for her, got her house ready. And then she changed all the rules at the end. And I just told her, you know, look, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, your house is never going to sell at that price. And, you know, this is an investment of my time and money. And I fired her and we had this conversation. And it just goes to show that, you know, it was really hard making that decision. But guess what? She withdrew her house because it didn't sell after six months. You know, so now she's on her third realtor who of all I'm sure told her that that house is not going to sell. Yeah. Not at that price. You know what? But it, it was really simply, difficult at the time. But doesn't it feel so good now? Yes. It feels great okay. because it just reinforced the fact that, you know what, I'm entitled to a life and this is my business and I'm entitled to run my business the way I feel um, I should. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And I would give you and go as far as to say I'm entitled to be respected, right? It's actually quite, it, it's like, it's, it's more, it's almost more broad than that. Like, I want to be treated with respect. Okay. If, um, well, let me, let me, let me rephrase that. I don't know if respect's the right word. I want to be treated with kindness. Okay. You don't have to like respect me or like look up to me or something. Just do what you say you're going to do, right? It drives me insane when I have an appointment with another agent and we have an appointment to talk about helping them build their business and they blow it off because they had a home inspection. What that's telling me is that appointment was on the calendar, our appointment. Then they got somebody else that needed their time and they didn't have enough control over their, their day or their business or their calendar to say, I have a commitment at two. However, it's only 30 minutes. I'll be there at 2.30. You see what I'm saying? Yes. What that's telling me is they, 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 they're not standing up for their own decisions. Well, and you know, as we've talked, my biggest issue really, um, one, of, one of my biggest issues is my calendar. And and trying to be faithful to my calendar. And, you know, I've, I'm really trying to, you know, time block and I time blocked and this guy, you know, I desperately need a script partner, you know, I, from eight to eight 30, I'm like, great, this will work. I found him through, um, through uh, bold and uh, you know, lo and behold, he just is blowing me off. So, you know, he's not respecting my time. He's not, he's, he's not already taken enough of you. Jan, he's already taken enough of your mental energy. Exactly. Okay, so you go on the bold page today, or uh, I forget who who is going to be your partner. Uh, Kim's going to be my uh, my partner. Yeah. So chat with Kim, Kim and 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 get an honest. I know Kim's Kim's uh, got other partners as well. So you know, get an honest assessment of what she's able to do. And if you feel the need to have more than that, then go on the bold page. No, and I actually, I don't. Um, I, I, that's one of the things, that's why I'm looking for a script partner because the calendar, you know, I changed my calendar and um, I need a script partner from 8 to 8.30. So that would be awesome. So if she's good from 8 to 8.30. That, that's I, perfect for me. That's awesome. Yeah. Except perfect. for Tuesday because Jan has a commitment Tuesday morning at 8. That's right. That That is right. I only do it four days a week. So we'll talk after and, and get it okay. worked out. All right, guys, let's talk about bold for a second, okay? Um, first of all, one last uh, housekeeping thing. I, I did quite a bit of uh, cleanup and additions to the Just PC folder over the weekend. So if you haven't gone there in a little while, um, please take a minute at some point to, to look into the Just PC folder. Um, there are some new things um, that are in the uh, script book, in the um, daily stuff, in the um, special stipulations in the daily trackers. There's all kinds of new stuff in there. So take a, take a peek in there. Okay. Um, I also included a number of new files in the email from yesterday. So if you have not seen that, uh, don't hesitate to take a couple minutes there too. 
Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. Can I ask yes, you something? What what is your just be just be C folder? Where is that that's located? The, that's the private um, Google Drive for the group. Okay. Um, so for that one, do I already have access to that as well? The private one. Uh, uh, you should, and there's a ta there's a um, there's a uh, what do you call it a, um, a a link in the email that I sent yesterday too. Okay. All right. Thanks. It just says Google Drive, so the, I I have it titled just PC. That's why I said it. Um, okay. Yeah, lots of information in there that that hopefully can be real helpful for you guys. Okay, so let's just do a quick review of where we're at month to date. Um, we have. Ooh, somebody added a ton of people to their database. Who was that? I did. That that was the people that I didn't put in there correctly the other time. Oh my lord, to want us 120 people in five days. Yes, added to the database and command. Yeah, transfer you to the host. What's going on? <laughs> no, I just put it on the Excel sheet. Yeah, I'm not trust me, I wish it was listing. <laughs> we gonna try to work Great it out. Job! Oh my God! Great job! <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, so to, thanks everyone, or thank you to Tawantas because we we still need to do our fifty, but we that that is going to uh, really really help our, our ability to hit this goal. Okay, hey. so great job. All right, I want to just uh, I want to recap why we decided to do this. Okay, first of all. Um, I think at the beginning of each month or the very end of each month, we all need to take a moment and kind of look through how things were and maybe even do this every week. Okay. I usually take about at least an hour on Sundays just to kind of look through my calendar from the previous week. You know, what, what days were, was I particularly productive? What days did I struggle a little bit? You know, what, what type of distractions got in my way? Did I take care of my family the way I want to take care of my family? Did I take care of my health the way I want to take care of my health? Like, what did I do really well this week? What did I do kind of poorly this week, right? Um, and really get an opportunity to do some, some self-evaluation, some business evaluation. So one of the goals that we set uh, for that exact reason is I felt like in the month of July, we were a little, uh, we were a little off in terms of the additions to our database. And I felt like we were getting um, kind of resorting to, and this no no judgment here. I'm just looking at the data from from the global perspective. Okay, we we're having a lot of conversations, but we were having a lot of conversations with presumably people we knew. Okay, and the idea there is we weren't either asking the people we knew for referrals, or we were just calling people we knew and having chit chat conversations. And as a result, our appointments were a good bit down, and our listings taken were a good bit down. Right. And so I challenged everyone to have 1,800 database additions as a team in the month of uh, August. As of right now, where we have, uh, um, let's just call it roughly half of the month, um, a little, little bit more than half of the month reported, we have 830. So today I said, I wanna lead by example, and I wanna encourage everyone to say, hey, when we know we're behind on a goal, what do we do? Do we say, oh, a lot of stuff got in the way, kids back in school, blah, 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 blah. Or do you say, you know, I knew the kids were going back to school in the third week in August, so I can't use that as an excuse, right? And I can't call my gas company and say, hey, kids went back in school, so I had a lot of distractions last week, so I made less money than I was hoping to make. You just got to do what you got to do, right? You got to clear the schedule, and you got to go after your goal. So today, what I'm going to encourage you guys to do is – um, build the database. Today, you, you, you know, I know we focus on a lot of different stuff. Everyone's got a slightly different business model, right? Um, but what we know from Shift is the more people that you engage and the more conversations that you have and the more people in your database, the more results you're going to get. Let me remind you of the statistic for, um, uh, for sales. Um, 36 touches is the way that Keller Williams says we should be communicating with our people on an annual basis. Okay. When, for every hundred people that you have in your database that you communicate with that, that way, by the way, that's friends, family, neighbors, um, that is uh, uh, vendors that, you know, you're, you're in relationship with all of that. 
then you should have 10 closings. So one out of every 10 people in your database should transact each year. What's the average commission in our town? It's about $10,000, okay? So what does that mean? That means that for every person that you put into your database, mathematically, that person is worth $1,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want you to think about that today as you're deciding whether you want to add somebody to your database. Okay. If you lined up a hundred people that just transacted business, okay, NAR, National Association of Realtors, these are a hundred people that have said they had relationships with real estate agents. Do you know what percentage of those people use the agent that they said they had a relationship with? Nine percent. Ah, Nine percent. <laughs> I told you the answer three days ago, Jan. <laughs> I know, 12 must just be stuck in my head. No, I think you said seven last time. Uh, okay. I don't know. Either way, Nine. if I line up 100 people that claim they have a relationship with a real estate agent, 91 of those people will choose a different real estate agent next time they do something. 91. So just about, you know, I don't, I mean, just about everybody should be in your database unless yeah. they're like, do not put me in your database. I am married to a real estate agent, you know, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Everyone else should be in your database. So what, the attitude that I want you to have today as you are making these phone calls is that you have uh, technology tools that the consumer does not have that they would find valuable, okay? The monthly neighborhood nurture, the mobile app, okay? Um, you, are, um, you have access to uh, pretty much any type of professional there is. If you were to say, hey, uh, I don't know, a life insurance salesman, doesn't have much to do with real estate, but I bet you if you put, hey, who needs a, or I need a life insurance salesman on Roswell Pager and even in our group, you'd have five recommendations in two minutes. So you have access to any type of professional that any of these people might need, okay? You call a vendor, let's say you call a painter today that helped paint a home that you were involved in or something like that. Hey, are you, um, you know, how are you doing? How's business? You know, what strategies are you using to make sure you survive the, this, um, you know, blip, right? Um, hey, are you taking on new clients? I'm on the telephone with buyers and sellers all day long. If I, you know, hear of somebody or know of somebody that's looking for a great painter, how would you like me to recommend? How would you like me to connect them? Right? Mm -hmm. By the way, um, you know, I'm part of the number one training organization in the world. I've got a lot of tools and technologies that can help your clients too. You know, would, would you be open to being referral partners? Yes, great. Let me get you into my database. What's your address, et cetera, et cetera, right? So today I just want you to have a, a specific focus on adding people to the database, okay? So the big ideas for today, I would say, um, I will post a, I didn't get an opportunity to do this this morning, but there is a, um, give me one second. Um, I will post in the next couple of minutes the, um, there's something from Bold this last week that is like a memory jogger of uh, different vendors that you are probably in some form of relationship with. So these are people like, you know, your, your painter, your housekeeper, your, um, your financial guy, the person who does, you know, insurance for your family, these kind of things. Um, these people should all be in your database, right? Call them up. Love on them, ask them how their family's doing, ask them how school's going for their kids, ask them where they went on vacation this summer, ask them if there's anything that you can do for them, real estate related or otherwise, okay? Let's get into relationship with people. You can, don't forget, if you're from a different area, you can call all the people from your old hometown and let them know about the neighborhood nurture and let them know about our uh, network of um, referral agents across the country. So if you came from Chicago and you got a whole database in Chicago, great. Call every one of them, love on them, and let them know that you can help them find a perfect realtor when the time comes, okay? Um, particularly if you know homeowners, uh, I'm sorry, business owners, you should be asking them how their business is going. All, this, all the tools from Shift and MREA, these are all concepts for business owners. It doesn't have to be just real estate agents. 
Everyone needs an economic model. Everyone needs a lead generation model. Everybody needs a budget model and an organizational model. Okay, so don't go in the attitude, don't, don't have the attitude today of um, I'm bothering people. Have the attitude today of I've got a ton of resources and a ton of knowledge and I'm going to share it with as many people as I possibly can. A great, a great source for new people in your database would be um, Facebook friends that they're recommending or LinkedIn connections that they're recommending, right? Sometimes this is like old coworkers or it could be, um, you know, college friends or parents of your, you know, of, of, of your neighbor, you know, your, um, your kids' classmates, parents, that kind of stuff, okay? Sometimes as crazy as it sounds, it's people that you've been in close proximity to. If you're so, like, for example, let's say Rhonda and I have never met, we have no connection whatsoever. If our cell phones get close, let's say we stand next to each other in the line at the grocery store, Facebook can tell and they'll suggest that I'm friends with her. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It's a lot. <laughs> All right. So I don't, um, so I'd like for you to uh, have a goal today. You don't have to share your goal. It doesn't have to be 50. I just want you to add more people to your database than you ever have in one day. Is that a fair request? Guys, Bill sent out that thing, how to download your Facebook friends uh, at the end of last week. Mm -hmm. and so that's a great way to do that. Um, but Bill, how, how do you know about that, that thing about standing in the grocery line? I mean, I've seen it happen. Oh, okay. I've seen it happen. I'm just wondering who I could go stand next to if I could stand. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> all right guys so let's just do a standing next to people too close at the grocery store trying to lead generate hey you know what every single person at the grocery store is either going to going to be renting a home or owning a home and guess what you can help with either one okay you can ask that question hey when you have real estate questions who's the agent that you that you approach right everyone's got real estate questions people that definitely can't afford a home or still looking at homes, right? My wife just bought a home. We just bought a home last summer and she's already looking at homes again. Okay. Now, um, so this is the list. I'll post this here. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll attach a um, PDF uh, to, the, uh, to the group here in a few minutes. I'm going to leave the room open all day long. Um, for those that have a one-on-one -on -one with me today, let's... Um, Let's do our one-on-ones over the phone today. Um, I do have a couple of little things I have to pop out for, but I will be doing the exact same thing today. Okay, y'all? Are you going to call us? Successes. I'm sorry? Are you just going to call us? Or okay? Yeah, I'll call you. Okay. I'll call you. Okay. Um, so um, if you have any questions, just shoot me a message. I'll be here all day, or I'll be in front of my computer all day. Um, you know, I know you guys have other things going on, I just, I'm just asking you to make, uh, just hunker down a little bit today and add more people to your database than you ever have in one day, okay? Fair? All right. I will turn off the recorder, uh, share your successes today, and I can't wait to see the results. Tawanta, that means you gotta add like over 120 people today, by the way. So you got, you got quite a day. You didn't know I was gonna say that, did you? It's my daughter's birthday today, so my focus is on her today. Okay. Is she in your database? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Y'all have a great day. Bye. Thanks. Bye.
If you, I was wondering. Yeah. Right. No, I mean on your house, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The lake side. Yeah, I'm 
Trying to find the top.
Where'd everyone go? I'm here, but I'm about to go to Ignite, so I'm about to have to sign off and go to that Zoom meeting. Okay. All right. I hope people are committed to their businesses now. I'm not saying that about you, of course. I'm just wondering where everyone went. No idea. All right. I'll see you soon. Bye, Bill.